There's different avenues that you can take whenever it comes to game collecting. You can go for a full set. You can actually collect for different genres. Everyone has their preference when it comes to video game collecting. And today I'm gonna talk about my journey and about how my collection has transitioned over the years. So let's get into it. All the way back to my teenage years. Yes, I'm starting there. Why? Because that's when I first started collecting games myself with my own money. Now I'm not going to start back whenever I was about six years old when I first started playing games because my parents bought everything for me. I'm going to start whenever I started adding games to my collection myself. Now whenever I was a teenager I was pretty picky about what I collected. I would always look on the back of the box just to see what the game was like or look inside to see what the manual was. I relied on commercials if I if I saw it or references from friends. So that's how I actually started my game collecting when it came to that, you know, for adding stuff to my collection and playing games. And my preferred genres, of course, was RPGs. And it still is. That's still my favorite genre to collect for. But I was very picky about that. And of course, you know, whenever you're younger, money's limited. So you have to be picky about what you choose. So whenever I went into the game store, I used to have a game store close to me and I would probably go there like every two weeks whenever I had money be like, okay, what can I add this time? I would always have to be picky about what I had because money, you know, I didn't have a lot of it at the time. Now, one example or two examples rather that I can give you about what I spent my money on whenever I was younger, one would be Clock Tower 3. Now. Why did I get this game? Like I said before, I based a lot of my choices on cover art, the back, and then the manual if it was in there. So I looked at this game, I'm like, okay, she looks terrified, what the hell's going on? I read the back, behind every shadow lie your darkest fears. I'm like, oh, okay, that looks pretty sick, let's fucking go. So I paid about $5 for this. Yes, it's more expensive in this day and age. A lot of games were a lot cheaper back then. Oh, I wish I jumped on collecting a lot more than what I did until now. But anyway, eh, it happens. But that sold me, so I played it. I love this game. It's such a great game. Elisa. And it can be frustrating as shit with some of the bosses. But that's one thing that sold me was just looking at the cover art, looking at the back. You know, and of course it was cheap. It was five bucks. Another one that I did that with was Dark Cloud. Now... What this one sold me on was, this looked like Link with the hat. I'm like, Link? Wait, that ain't Link. Hold on a second. I read the back. I'm like, okay, Giaroma. What the hell is that? Okay, RPG. Well, that's got me. I didn't know about this when I was like 50 feet beyond it. I'm like, okay, this is only five bucks. I'm going to take a chance on it. I'm so glad I did because whenever the second one finally came into the store, I think that was like a few months later, I bought it and I adore Dark Cloud 2. Way more than this one, but this one is still great. Now, that's what I mean about being picky as far as like collecting goes. I was very selective about what I added to my collection because I was on a budget. I had specific genres that I played, survival horror RPGs, and that still, you know, is part of my collecting thought process to this day. But as I got older, I wanted to invest more in my collection. I wanted to explore more options whenever it came to other systems that I never had experienced before. And that's what we're gonna get into. In my 20s, my collecting started to take another turn. I wanted to explore more options. I mean, I'm adulting, I had got more money. I got more avenues that I could look down on. And one thing that I wanted to do was add consoles that I never had whenever I was a kid. One being, which is right here. Let me just grab it over here. The Dreamcast. Now, I've explained that my experience with Dreamcast was always limited whenever I was younger. The only Sega console I ever owned whenever I was a kid was a Genesis. And the only way I was able to ever play a Dreamcast was at a friend's house. And I never can forget my first ever experience with this console. And that was playing Power Stone. So naturally, what do I do? Adulting 101, I go buy a Dreamcast. So I was very excited to add this to my collection. And this is still pristine looking. Now, I still don't have a lot of experience with the Dreamcast. I'm still learning even years later, but still my collecting was still a little bit, you know, I was still a little bit stingy with my collection. I'm like, I do want to adventure more into systems that I never had, but I'm still picky about what I add. I'm still adding RPGs. I'm still adding survival horror, things like that. But, but my collection, you know, I wanted to invest in older things too. Now, like I said, I did play Atari 2600 growing up and I had one. 
but I never had like, you know, anything else beyond that that was older. And I still don't want to collect anything older than that. Not really. Not unless it's something that I want to, you know, preserve for my collection, like the Fairchild, which, you know, I have thought about buying one of those. It'd be cool to have for the collection, but that's neither here nor there right now. So I wanted to get games for my collection that I never, you know, experienced on Atari or things that were, you know, near and dear to my heart. And a couple of those games that I loved as a kid was Haunted House. This game was really fun. And another favorite of mine was Warlords, which this is one of the ones that I have. That C I B. Ah, I love this game. There's a lot of games that I never played on Atari, and there's some that you know I still love to this day. So I dived into the Atari, you know, market, and I still do collect for Atari to this day because one, Atari's cheap to collect for, and two, you know, I'm not really you know collecting too much for it. It's just mainly loosely. So. Whenever I say I'm going back to older consoles, that's what I meant. But I'm still being selective about what I get. Now, this is when my collection took a dark turn. Now, half of my collection was, and I've told many people this story, but I'm going to tell you all now. Half of my collection was pawned off. So I'm talking like a lot of my high tier stuff, my Silent Hill games, my copy of Roller Rose. I still remember getting that for $20. A lot of things were gone. And I was at the point where I didn't know if I wanted to collect anymore. But I made the decision to just do it piece by piece, a little bit at a time. Kind of like I had been doing, but a little less so because, you know, gaming was starting to get more expensive. But like I said, with that adult money, I would here and there pick up things. I would go to the flea market, still go to the game store. You know, not the one I used to go to whenever I was a teen. That one sadly was no more. But, you know, my collecting eye was a little bit more stringent on because of that fact. But as I entered my 30s, I actually made a very drastic decision whenever it came to my collecting. It was one that I had toyed with for many years and one that I'm happy that I actually made the decision to finally do. Going into my 30s, my collecting did a 180 because of certain factors. I've been toying with the thought of doing social media content for many years on gaming, collecting, but I just never took the plunge because I was too chicken shit. I really was. I never really have been a social media person. And whenever I got in my 30s, I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. Let's just do it. So I did. I'm very happy I did. Shout out to everybody in the gaming community. Thank you for being so kind to me. Such great friends I've made over the past three years that I've been doing this. I do not regret doing this because I've had such an amazing experience. So whenever I started doing the content creations, whenever my mind shifted, I'm like, hmm, you know what? After seeing everybody with their collection, with their journeys, I wanted to finally take that, that gnawing thought in my head and finally put it to life. I'm like, you know what? There's many games that I've never experienced, so I'm gonna lay down these rules for myself. Number one, let it be a system that I love, that I really wanna collect for. And what system comes to mind other than the original PlayStation? It's one system that I've loved since I first started playing it. Shout out to my dad. He's actually the one that got me my very first PlayStation, and he's the one that helped solidify my love for this system. So that's what solidified me going for a complete set for PlayStation because it had to be something that I really loved. Number two, if they are not just gonna sit there. When it came to collecting a long time ago, my rule of thumb was I need to be able to play it. It's not just gonna sit there. I don't wanna add shovelware to my collection. Well, even shovelware needs to be played. It needs a home too. So going for a complete set, I still apply that one rule is that it's going to get played. And trust me, my sports games have gotten played. Now, I've got over, like, probably I want to say 675 right now standing for my PS1 collection. So I'm getting there. So there's still a lot of titles that I haven't got to experience. But they're just not going to sit there to collect us. I spend my hard-earned money on these games so you damn well know I'm going to play them. And there's another reason why I want to play them too. I want to experience the games in my collection. I want to see what they're like, whether they be good, whether they be fucking terrible, dog shit, who knows? I mean, it's just another memory that I'm creating. So that was another thing whenever I thought about going for a complete set, what was going through my head about why I wanted to do this. And of course, you know, I know that it was expensive going into it in this day and age versus 10 years ago, but the money is besides the point. You know, it's not about that. The memories that I create and the fun that I have doing this is what's number one to me. 
And you know, collecting has always been fun for me. It's always been enjoyable going game hunting, seeing what I can find, what gems I can acquire for my collection. But like I said before, I was always picky. But now, when I score a game for two bucks, hell yeah, even if it's a sports title, I get excited because it's another step closer to my goal. And that's one thing that I love. And I've experienced a lot of games over the years that I never got to whenever I was younger. That's another thing, experiencing those games, like I said before. One of those was the Lunar series. And that would be, you know, Lunar 2, for example. And this is complete in box. I adore this series. I never got to play it whenever I was younger. There's so many RPGs that I missed out on. And this is why, you know, PlayStation was another pivotal reason for that decision because PlayStation is the golden era of RPGs. At least for me it is because there's so many on that system there's even one i've never got to experience yet which i'm about to play soon starting next week and that's thousand arms this one i played it a little bit you know just to test it out and it's funny as hell with the dialogue see more stuff there's even shit that i've got to experience it's been a wild ride but it's still been funny as hell and that's easter buddy's big day yes this does exist i don't know why it just does shovelware but hey still played it still experienced it while well, played again no <laughs> no and then, then, of course, you know, I'm a huge survival horror fan. There's that, too. There's a lot of stuff I never got to experience with that, either. And I've only got to play the third clock tower growing up. Never saw the other two. And so, adulting with my adult money, I finally got to get clock tower, and I played it. Did I like it as good as the third one? Not really. Still need to get the second one, but holy shit, $450 is a lot of money to drop. But I'll eventually get there. But that's just a few examples of why I wanted to go into this and, you know, get my collection for PS1. Now, I'm still collecting loosely for other systems too. Dreamcast, because it's my favorite Sega system. And of course, Wii U, because I have a fondness for the Wii U and a lot of people will shit on it because, you know, they say it's a crappy system. No, it's not. It's a good system. You should try it sometime. Don't shit on it till you try it. I say that about a lot of things. But when it came to collecting, that's what really solidified it. I love sharing my journey about every time I get a game, about whenever I finally get to play a game and experience it for the first time. There's a lot of firsts with a lot of these games. And sharing that experience with everyone is another thing about why I like doing this. So whether it, you be a completionist, whether you just collect for RPGs, survival horror, whether you collect for a certain system, whether it be PS1, Genesis, Nintendo, do what you love. That's what matters. Don't worry about what everybody else says. It's your money. You buy what the fuck you want. Whether it be dog shit to them or they hold it on a pedestal, it doesn't matter. You collect what you love. You play what you love. And that's what I think as far as collecting goes. But I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed, you know, hearing about my collection journey, how it's transitioned over the years. But until next time, this is the PlayStation Girl signing out. Game on!